Hello, 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 and welcome to week four of our podcast um, for the sermon series. Let's talk about sex as followers of Jesus. I am your host, Miss Danita Keys, and as always, we're here in our Southern Friendship Missionary Baptist Church studio. And I have a couple of, of my covenant partners in here. I'm just so excited, you guys. Again, week after week after week, we come in here and we're just going to jump right in. I'm going to introduce you guys to who I have in um, the studio. We have um, Miss Faitress Kelly. We have Brother John Kelly. <laughs> we have Sister Ariana Clark. Um, her mom, Adrian Clark. And Brother Billy Woodall. All right. So listen. So y'all know we just kind of did something a little different today. I usually have uh, four guests, but I'm so honored to have five guests in the studio. So I just can't wait to get right into this conversation. And again, like I say, week after week after week, um, if you guys get a chance, please, please, please go to our Facebook page or our YouTube page and watch today's installment of let's talk about sex as followers of jesus y'all know our pastor he's always bringing that word and so today um his scripture reference came from first corinthians 6 12 through 20 and the title for today was living to honor god in my sex life and so y'all know uh, we have single we have married and so with our whole mix um, I always start before we get going. Um, the question of the day is, when y'all heard Pastor say, we are going to talk about sex from the pulpit as followers of Jesus. First thoughts. And just anybody can go. It's no like, oh, we got to go in order this way. So just jump right in. What were your first thoughts? So we, we already, we have four now. So what, what was your first thought? Um, well, I would say I was super excited about it because you rarely hear that from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's very important, like, not just for married couples, but also those that are single. Because it lets them know and it reminds them that their body is into the Lord if they are not married. Okay. So I thought it was really... Um, I thought it was like super powerful okay and very necessary for the time that we're in awesome awesome anyone else i kind of um like um the idea that he was talking about sex because again we living in a fallen world right now mm -hmm. and um a lot of time a lot of people even in marriages don't honor sex because mm -hmm. uh sex is supposed to be between two and being married at that but we doing it a little more than just honoring it in our household. We honor it on the outside as well, which mm. that's not pleasing to God. Exactly. So again, it's good to to talk about it because as a congregation, we need to hear that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Great, great. Anyone else? Just I, jump in. I think for me, I looked at it. Um, was like, how was he going to address this from a multi generational church mm. and to hit everybody, married couples, singles, and our teens? And our preteens, you know, mm -hmm. because our, our teens and preteens are hit with sex more than we like to think. Right, right. So I just wanted to see how he was going to approach it. And, and I've liked the way it seems to me that he is speaking to everybody. It's not just the married couple. So with every every sermon, someone can get, everybody can get something out of it. Absolutely, absolutely. My first thought was interesting. <laughs> how, what direction... Can he go with this from uh -huh. the poor pit? Mm -hmm. Because I had never heard of, me personally now, had never heard of a sermon mm -hmm. on sex. Uh -huh. from, from the pool pit, from right? The pulpit, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. So I, I, my thought was, look at the eight differences of the people in here. And, the, you know, so how can he talk to a 70-year-old man and a 20-year-old female at the same time? Uh -huh. you know? mm -hmm. So that was kind of like, what? You know, I don't, okay. like, you got it. I guess at first it was just like I don't really I don't understand like why it's a you know because I'm only 16 so I'm like I'm not really I'm not doing these things that other people are doing but then I think and I'm like well I know some people that are 
And my thing was mainly my age. Like, I'm only 16, so it was just like, maybe this doesn't pertain to me. But, like, now thinking, I'm like, well, I know some people that are active and mm-hmm. doing things that, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was just. It's a learning experience. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And so um, I'm always intrigued when I ask that question because, and I have to say ask because my son be like, oh, you be making fun of me. Um, it's because, because like you said, we're in this um, multi-generational congregation. You have married folk. You have single folk. And so initially when he said it, I immediately thought, Oh, here go the singles about to get beat up on because every time they talk about sex, it's like, don't do it. You know, you're not supposed to do it. And so week after week after week after week, and now even including um, today, it has just been um, such a blessing to know that, okay, he has something for everyone. So he's not just singling out those who... Um, are waiting to be married. So point one was God-given freedom Freedom must not not be abused. Okay, so we say God-given freedom must not be abused. Anyone have anything that just kind of jumped out? Like from that first point, you got something that was like, oh my goodness, Um, I've never thought about that like that. That is like, um, although we have freedoms and we're free to do various different things, Mm -hmm. some things, even though you are free to do them, they do not honor God. So therefore, that is not a freedom that you should try to actually, you know, get involved with. Because when you're not honoring God, that is sin. Mm -hmm. So even though we're free to do things, you know, it's out there. I know about it. I can do it if I choose to do it. Uh But if you're a follower of Christ and you want to honor him, then you need to abstain from those things that you are not, you're forbidden to do. To do. Got it. Good. We are free. We do have the freedom. um, And we shouldn't abuse it, but... Um, Pastor also said something about, you know, if we voluntarily pick something up and we can't put it down. Mm, you know, and, yes. And uh, um, uh, a friend of mine, you know, is uh, sexually addicted. You know, he's somebody I know personally that have picked it up. And can't put it he down. He can't put it down. Mm-hmm, you know? and, mm-hmm. um, it ruined his marriage. And, you know, and uh, he's still... Can't put, can't put it down. You can't put it down. Yeah. And as, as as you grow and learn more about God and being your freedoms, and you know it's a sin. Why? You know, I mean, as you as you we come in here and, and grow, mm-hmm. we continually learn about Christ, and the more we learn, the better. Once you uh, once you know better, you do better. You do better. Yes. You know, so. Yes. And then it's one thing to, for us, I know, especially to get this kind of teaching and the word that comes from um, the pulpit week after week after week after week. If we just allow it to fall on death ear and never do anything with it, that is no slight to him because we know he prepares. We know he comes ready. And so we just have to put ourselves in that Um, posture to be ready to receive Mm -hmm. and then not only to receive be in the position to do Um, because just growing up in church for my whole life you know you hear those things but again sometimes you feel like oh that don't pertain to me or oh he's not talking to me oh uh, I'll get it right next time and we we find it easy to make excuses on why we don't want to live right because everybody in the world is doing it and so why can't I and I can repent later kind of thing but again when we know better um, we do better and so when we set ourselves up like that to say okay I know I can't because this is my body and but pro choice and all of that I can do what I want to do it's my thing I can do what I want to do but just because he gave me this freedom it's not really for me to just 
be out here reckless doing whatever anybody else. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. And then I'm telling y'all, y'all got to sometimes stop me because I will get the going. And that's probably why I say, oh, I don't like my voice. And I don't like the way I sound. I was like, but you sure like to talk. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> if I'm talking, y'all just jump in. I would like, uh, like calm down. But this, this whole series just has really been um, exciting. And the feedback uh, from those that listen and so i i know that when we're in here whatever we're saying whatever we're sharing is meant to bless someone so right, right. that's that's how i look at it so anyone else I, um, I, I think about when pastor said you know even though something is permissible doesn't always mean it's beneficial mm, yes that that really struck me because it took me back to my teenage years, my young adult years, when I was one of those ones that was doing what I wanted to do, Uh still coming to church, feeling guilty, okay, we're not going to do this anymore, we're not going to do this anymore, Uh and fall back into that same trap. Because I knew, like you said, society says, I'm a woman, I can do what I want to do with my body. And because it was permissible, doesn't mean that it was beneficial to me. And it wasn't. Because then I got those soul ties, or got connected to people that I should not have been connected to. And then when the relationship severed, Mm -hmm. then here I am because I allow something to come into my life that should not have been. And now I have to deal with that. Yes, and those are real. Those things because I gave something permission but it wasn't beneficial ooh, to me in the end. Yes, y'all. What she just said, ooh, that just ooh, struck something. So ties are real. So whoever is listening, y'all don't think it's real. Yes, it, it truly is. So when that person that you haven't seen or you haven't spoken to and you've allowed them that space that was meant for your husband or that space that was meant for your wife, Years and years and years and years later, I'm like, oh, I need an exorcism or something because <laughs> this thing is real. And I love, um, I, I, I put this down, um, ask the question, what sp- spiritual benefits do I get from this? So if we, if we look at that and say, okay, I'm about to do X, Y, Z, what spiritual benefit do I get from this? Especially if I'm saying... I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and I'm living my life in this way to say, okay, is eating the third Krispy Kreme donut, is that really beneficial? Like, no, the need of the one was good enough. Like, I two, okay, two maybe, but yeah. Dawn, three, That's now you done ate the whole box. Come on now. Exactly. It's like, okay, am I the only one that do that? Like, when y'all eat some cookies, do y'all get like, oh, I'm only going to get three, and then the I three? I on four. four. <laughs> oh, you start with four? Maybe I should do that. Do you stop there? Not all the time. <laughs> you yeah, so I think, like, like you were saying, with the spiritual benefit, if, mm-hmm. if there's no spiritual benefit if it does not honor God. Right. So for you, there's nothing. You just did what you wanted to do, but God... When it came to him, it's like like Pastor said, God, mind your business. This ain't about you right now. Uh-huh, so uh-huh. if there's no benefit to him, and as a believer, your goal is to honor Christ with your body. Yes. Um, I and and too. like like uh, I think Adrian was saying earlier, oh, was it Billy? Once you pick up some habit, it's mm. hard to get rid of it. Yeah. Even though you live in and you want to glorify God, it's hard to do so because you've already got connected to things that. Do not glorify him. Yes, yes. Also, I, I like the analogy when he used about the probation, probation, and mm-hmm. um, he said that you know when you're on probation, it's like you get freedom because you're not in jail no more. Right. But now you out of jail and you got a probation officer, you got some freedom there. But if you if you do something wrong, uh-huh. you would, outside, you'd be right back where you came from, yes. back in jail. So uh-huh. again. Um, that's just like when we dealing with God, trying to honor God, and we step out there on God. Again, whatever we stepped out on, we got to be careful because, again, we could be enslaved to it. Ooh, yes. So, again, we being enslaved to what we already know we're supposed to be honoring God with our bodies. But, again, we stepped out doing something that we wasn't supposed to be doing. Next thing you know, that can lead to something else, and that can lead to something else. Next thing you know, you're enslaved to sin again. Yeah, so. yeah. And it's really hard to come back 
uh, you can, but it's so hard because the longer you're left out there and the longer you're entertaining that That's thing, right. the mm -hmm. harder it it's is right. to Get let it go. Right. And so right. when he said, it's like, okay, cigarettes, they like, uh, what, five, six, seven dollars? Like, oh, that's an expensive habit. And then you're saying you smoking two, three, four packs. Like, oh, that's a lot. And so I never thought of that. Um, I do know, okay, when you start something, it's hard to. But the way he um, broke it down, it's like, oh, okay. It that it's hard. I'm sorry. Were you gonna say something? <laughs> I'm in non, now I'm caught up in listening. Uh, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but when I'm trying to when I honor God with my body, mm -hmm. um, and if there is an, uh, a slip or a sin that that uh, in there, I wander off the eye, eye or something. Mm -hmm. Try to get it back in check. Right. Mm. Uh, uh, right then. That's why. I, Look too long, for act too long, a guilt. Yeah. You know, uh, a, 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 a guilt. Yeah. You know? And so that's a good place to be there where you feel guilty. I never want to be at the place where I'm doing it. There's no conviction. There's no guilt. Mm -hmm. Now right. I'm gonna turn me over to a reprobate uh, mind, uh, and now I'm just out well. here like. Okay, why are they oh, looking at me? Right. Like, okay, right. wait. Exactly. So, I love the fact to know that he's still there the tugging. Mm. He's tugging and he's yes. saying, yep. no, no. Mm. And the word is true. He gives us that way to escape. Right. It's just, mm -hmm. do we, right. Do we That's want to? Go? Do we That's want right. to? Right. Because mm -hmm. I like putting, he said, um, I think last week about putting your, your feet on the hot coals or something. Mm -hmm. Like, will it get burnt? <laughs> No, that's not. That's not gonna happen to me. Hey, uh, no, that's not. And it's always the. It's not gonna happen to me. The disease. Oh no, I'm not gonna get no VD. I'm not gonna get this. Right, and so right, right, we right. always think that it's not gonna be us. Or oh, oh, that is a her thing. But no, that is a. You're out of the wheel. And that's right. sometimes when you're in the wheel, when you just. Like want to peek over a little bit, like ah, oh, nah, that don't look safe. Mm -hmm. I'd rather stay over here mm -hmm. and be in the wheel, knowing that okay, whatever this madness look like to me, Lord, you got me. That's you right. you got me. I'm sorry, y'all. Go and ahead. See, like we're we're sitting here now discussing, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, the possibilities of what could happen after committing a sin. Uh -huh. See, it don't take a thousand times or a hundred times to get out there yeah. and commit that sin of, of using your body. In one, one time. Yeah. You know. It only and, takes and, one and, time. And, 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 and you perfect. suffer the rest of your life mm -hmm. uh, uh, on earth. And it's, it's, it's a suffer. You know, I've witnessed that too, you know. Uh, but you know, um, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because again, we walking in a fallen world, and thank God that the Holy Spirit is walking with us. Because there'll be some temptations out there, mm -hmm. and because the Holy Spirit is already whispering to us and saying, "Nah, you you don't need that. Don't go there. Don't." Right. And sometimes we do it anyway, and then that's when we fall. Uh huh. Uh huh. So again, you know, I just thank God every morning. Please be with me because again, yes. we need Him. Yes. You know, because our eyes, I mean, it just, the eyes, there's so much yes. out there. Uh -huh, you know? uh -huh. um, and, 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 and the thing about it is that they already know that's the reason why they dress the way they do. The, because they already know it's, uh -huh. it's out there, temptation's out there. Uh -huh. So again, that Holy Spirit, walking with that Holy Spirit, He, he helping us. Yes. And keep us yes. going in that direction. Yes. Now, are you guys, you're a senior, right? Yeah. Woo woo, oh, y'all! Yes. yes, listen. We got us a we, we got a, a high school senior in the building. I love it. And so for you guys, and and I'm sorry because you're actually the youngest um, guest that I had in at a studio so far. And so when you're in school and in high school now, um, what are some of like the biggest challenges that you actually may see and so if you're saying okay my my pastor at my church is talking about sex 
as a follower of Jesus Christ, what's some of the things that you maybe see um, as a challenge for our younger? Uh, although I'm sure probably the same challenge you have, I, I have as a old lady too. But I'm just curious. I'm curious. Um, I say just trying to stay focused. Like. In school, you see a lot of people worried about boys or girls, and it's just like, you have all your life to figure that out. Mm. So, um, I just say dealing with temptation. Okay. So. Okay, that's, that's, and so that's universal. So that's young boys, young girls, mm -hmm. just dealing with temptation. So what are some of the ways that you would say, help me as your cousin, that's older to say you know what cousin this is some of the things that i do because it's one thing to say oh don't touch the stove it's hot it's hot it's hot okay but just give me like one thing because I, I know your parents so like what what's one thing and then i promise I, i'm not gonna pick on you <laughs> i see just trying to like i guess mentor if that makes sense like, mm -hmm. Give life examples of the things that you've gone through so that you can help other people know, like, you know, uh -huh. that uh -huh. might not be the route to go. Okay, okay, so have you, okay, I know I said I wasn't going to, mm -hmm. but oh, have yeah. you ever been in, just the, this is the last question for real, um, have you ever been in that position where you had to be the one to step in for a friend to say, hey, girl, like, mm -mm, yeah. child, pump your brakes, yeah. like, you too grown. You, you yes, been there? Because you're your mother's child. So I know, <laughs> like, can, can you can you share a little bit? You don't have to give um, names. Well, there was just a time she was, my friend was dating this boy. Um, and she found herself wanting to do, well, he was trying to pressure her into doing things like at school. What? And I'm like, well, one, we're, well, we were 15 at the time. I'm like, that's, we're not really at that age mm -hmm. or that status to be doing things and especially not at school like that just he doesn't have any respect for you if mm. he wants to take you in a bathroom and just like you know yes yeah i want to piggyback on something that ariana said about mentor um and my mother did it with me i try to foster a relationship with her and daniel that they can come to me and speak about anything my mother did it to with me even as a young girl you know her thing was, I don't want you to have sex before marriage, but if you decide you're going to go that way, have a conversation with me. Okay. And so that openness that my mother had, and even with Ariana, I try to be open with her. Well, I've shared some of my experiences that I had mm -hmm. as a teenager, having sex outside of marriage, asking, you know, because I my thing is, I don't want y'all to follow the path that I did. Right, you right. Know, I grew up in church, so I knew it was wrong, but like uh -huh. Pastor said, you know, I... I'm having fun. I'm still young. I got all my life to, uh -huh. to live for Christ. Mm -hmm. But the way you get beat up by doing what you know you're not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I think about when Pastor um, spoke about probation. I think about um, the folks with the ankle monitor. Mm. You know, because now you've done something and now everybody sees the ankle monitor. It was like, to me, it's like the scarlet letter. Everybody, even though nobody knew it, just feels uh -huh. like everybody knows. Uh -huh. You got that big old scarlet letter on your chest mm -hmm. and everybody knows what you're doing. But with the with those on probation, with the ankle monitor, it's because you've done something right. and now there's somebody monitoring you. So for me, the ankle monitor represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is monitoring you yes. in everything that you do. And Come there's on, going preach. to be somebody that's recognizing when you're out of order. The ankle monitor is for the probation officer to, uh, to monitor what you're doing. You are only allowed to go so far before you have violated your probation. And you have mm. to come back. The Holy Spirit does the same thing for us. Yes. He allows us to go so far and before we violate God's will for our life. And he's all along the way prodding us. Violation, uh -huh, violation, uh -huh, violation. Uh -huh. But are we going to in turn listen to that violation? And so I think as parents... We need to not be so high and mighty that we can't be honest with our children right. about what we did and what we went through. Right. Some people may say, "Well, you share a little bit too much. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have shared that with her." Mm -hmm. No, I want her to understand. Right. Don't fall in this trap with yeah. these guys right. that yeah. I fell in. Because yeah. I don't want you to have to go through a heartbreak yes. and then having mm -hmm. to pull yourself back up mm -hmm. and, and, and and be able to move through life 
and not have to worry about what you did in the past. Right. Having that eating at you. Right. Because so they I don't have to have those like, war stories right. that we have. I say like, to like, parents, be honest with you, especially with the girls and the way that our children at a young age are it, they are sexualized. We have to be open and honest and speak mm-hmm. to our children. Absolutely. Not just don't do this, uh-huh. but talk to them, explain, yes. and share your experiences so they will understand why you're saying right. don't go down that route. Right. It's not that you're being a Scrooge and you're trying to keep them from experiencing life. You just don't want them to experience life that's going to drag them down. Right, mm-hmm. right. And it's important. So not just to tell them not to, but tell why me not? Why? why? So, no, 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 no. Like, we hear no all the time. Like, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 like, no. Ariana shares some things with me sometimes. And it's just like, she'll start laughing. She's like, why are you looking like that? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah. I have to be, you know, it's like you caught me off guard. You know, she's sharing something about her or something that she's trying to talk to someone, a friend about, you mm-hmm, know. It's mm-hmm. like, so I, I, and I think we have to be mindful that make, have our children that comfortable yeah, that they yeah. will come and speak to us. I'd That's rather her right. come and speak to me or her dad than trying to speak to someone out in the street. Right. Uh, her age right. that really doesn't have right. the knowledge no. and the wherewithal right. to give them the right, right. the right tools to go about. Right. Because how much can another right. like 16 or right. 17 year old know? And so right. Right. like you're getting you're you're getting your 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 to do's right. from someone who right. is figuring it out just like you and so like why not go to the source right. and then we're gonna and not even with us but we've tried to put people in their lives that even if they don't want to talk to us mm-hmm. there's another adult that they will open up, up to, to and right. speak right. with so I think yes. that's important right. to make sure you put those ground mm-hmm. that grounding in your children and have some safe places mm-hmm. and um, safe uh, space for them and then so point two wait anybody else wanted to um, jump in on point one before I go to point two um, so point two um, was faithfulness to God means living to honor God and we hear this um, often and especially as followers um, of Jesus that our life and our mission with everything that um, it has um, that we are to go and we're to make disciples, but our life, like what this temple is supposed to be for and what this temple is designed for is to um, honor and live um, for God. Did anybody get something um, from there that y'all want to share? And then uh, while y'all looking, because y'all, um, my guests in here, some of them, they, they took some notes. <laughs> I like the way he said, um, with the bullseye, um, that that visual i'm just looking because i'm so competitive and i like winning at everything and so that bullseye that's in the middle have y'all ever noticed how small it is and so the bullseye is small everything else like as you go further and further and further and further Mm -hmm. it gets wider Mm -hmm. and so yeah it's easy for me to just belly yeah i'm just trying to belly hit the thing like no i'm aiming for bullseye and so if that's my goal to aim for bullseye um the closer i get to it not that i'm better than anybody else but listen i'm going for bullseye i don't know about nobody else like y'all can just try to be okay with being in the game, but they need a one to win. Anybody, anybody's job. Just I, I like what Pastor said that you have to put mechanisms in place mm. to keep you from sinning. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I thought about because most times when you hear people talking about having a friend being somewhere they are, that's only if they're dealing with, dealing with a blind date. You're right. Going on a blind date, somebody have my girlfriend or somebody. Right. Home. But this is at all times, even when you know the person that you're meeting is someone that you're thinking of sparking an interest in. Uh huh. You, you got to have the mechanisms in place to uh, to get you out of a situation that may not be the best for you. And I think about um, when Minister Fogel, um years ago, we were in uh, Sunday school and we were talking about something and. He spoke about how God gives you a way to get out of it. Uh-huh. He was out dating someone, and it was getting ready to move. Phone started ringing. So God always gives uh-huh. us a way to get out of stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, but are we going to listen to it? Are we going to heed it? That's the key. So, um, I'm single, but, okay, I was married twice, widowed, divorced, 
y'all already know the story listen to week one if you want the whole backdrop um but just like you said being at that place where one you want to honor god it can be challenging if you don't have accountability um people so my previous church we had um what they call cell groups and so there were a group of sisters and it's like girl he just called and i want to go and then they're like oh no you can't go so like so stop 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 but you have to be at that place one where you want people in your business Mm -hmm. so who are you going to let in your business because the one you don't want to be judged ah this girl she be calling me all night all she want to talk about is this that that and so exactly exactly like girl get something (laughs) on your head and so you have to get at that place one where you have someone that you're accountable to and someone so um they laugh at us because we all share our location and so i can pick up my phone and i look and i'm looking at stephanie like girl you ain't left work yet or we're all on each other's location so at any given point they can look to see oh you're far from college park like that's where i live why aren't you at xyz and so that that takes that takes a lot it, it takes a lot to be that transparent with people. One, because you don't want to feel like you're getting judged. It's like, uh, like why have you been over there so long? Who over there? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so um, I love it when um, I wrote this down. He said, um, what did he say? It's impossible to flee sexual sin when you refuse to believe the Holy Spirit resides in us. And so if I know that the Holy Spirit is in me, trying to outrun it is impossible. And so he said it before, it can be pitch black dark, uh huh. but the Holy Spirit is still sitting right there. It can be broad daylight, it can be Monday, it can be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The Holy Spirit is still there. And so you cannot flee from the Holy Spirit. You cannot shake it it's like okay you can try to quiet it you can do all the things that you want um but then it says actively fleeing or passively fleeing i wrote those down so those and so when I, when he's talking i'm just jotting down stuff for myself it's like mm, am i actively or am i passively so which one which one anybody want to share where they are actively or passively um, fleeing. I think I'm at a place of actively fleeing. Okay, okay. Because I do want to honor God, and I do want to honor my wife, mm-hmm. and I do want to honor my body. Yes. You know, because if I sin, dishonor Holy Spirit in me and my body, you know, and take it to my wife and dishonor her, mm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, um, that's not cool. For right. her. Um, there's just so much coming with this conversation. <laughs> um, I, I, the main thing is I don't want to dishonor my wife. Yes. You know, yeah. so that, that would make me clear a situation. Okay, you okay. Uh, um, go ahead, John. No, active. I'm, think, I'm thinking, yeah, active, because I think about, you know, um, we need God's strength. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, in these days, we definitely need God's strength because um, there's so many Again, temptation out there, and um, you have to be able to flee from it, you know. Uh-huh. Because again, you know, me being and what I do, you know, I deal with a lot of um, females because uh-huh. a lot of females managers. So again, you know, again, just wearing a ring don't mean anything. No, to these females, you're a here, target, especially, especially when these females are lonely, uh-huh. and, and they see somebody that can talk. And next thing you know, they think they can run a game. Mm-hmm. Again, God, he has his ways. The Holy Spirit has his ways of moving you out that situation. So, again, um, I just thank God for his strength today because, again, <laughs> you get caught up. Mm-hmm. You will get caught up mm-hmm. if it wasn't God's strength. So. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm taking back off of what John said. It's not just females that don't care about the ring. It, it, it's men. Men, too. Know? And so I, I have to, I, I'm actively um, pursuing 
following the Holy Spirit because, like you said, the temptation is out there. Mm -hmm. And some people just do not honor the sanctity of marriage. They don't care if you're married or not. Right. I've had a gentleman tell me, the ring don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. It may not mean anything to you. You. Right. Right. But it means something to me because I made a covenant. That's right. Not only with my spouse, but with God. Yes. And there's nothing that's going to make me break this contract. Yes. That I have because that's what it is. It's a contract that I've given this man that I'm gonna keep myself only to him. And I've given to God that you gave this man to me. And yes. so I'm his and he's mine and that's it. So yeah, I'm 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 actively pursuing it. And it, you have to because mm-hmm. things that are on T V yes. advertisement, everything it's all about sex and it's not always about keeping marriage sacred. Mm-hmm. There's so many mm-hmm. shows where there's adultery going on. There's yes. always some kind of Rampage. thing. So That's yeah, right. you have to right. be mindful and, and mm-hmm. actively pursue after actively. God in your marriage. Yeah, actively, actively. Yes, and I, I think the, um, the world just doesn't take marriage seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, because, like you said, on TV, they show you how people... Like, I guess the housewives of this thing, mm-hmm. the third. And housewives ain't none of them married. And, and then they do all of this stuff and they run in here and there and they're showing this to our younger people mm-hmm. like it's okay. Mm-hmm. So I think um, that we definitely have to pursue the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit be within us and pursue that. And I just thank God that the Holy Spirit is so real. Yeah. Like, Pastor was talking, like, when he and Talita were dating. And when he would come over, like, uh-huh. I ain't taking off my shoes. shoes. Uh-huh. Because I know that can lead to something else. Yeah. And I remember him saying, but Talita was like, when I put my rollers in my hair, it's uh-huh. time for you to go. Uh-huh. And I know, like, um, when I look at my wedding um, tape, that my husband, you know how you do your little remarks uh-huh. and stuff. And he was just like, I just thank God so much for this marriage because now we no longer have to sin. Mm. So that was right there that the Holy Spirit was dealing with him yeah. in the situation, even though everything felt good. Yeah. It was a time where you're like, God is pursuing me and he wants more. Yeah. So, you know, you just have to listen and heed to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I'm going to read this um, quote that he had <coughs> today um, from Thomas Brooks. It said, It is our wisest and our safest course to stand at the furthest distance from sin. The best course to prevent falling into the pit is to keep at the greatest distance. He that will be so bold as to attempt to dance upon the brink of the pit may find by by woeful experience that it is a righteous thing with God that he should fall into the pit. So you want to dance with the devil. Mm-hmm. And um, I, when I saw it, I was like, uh-huh. I said, ooh, that's a lot. That That's like a mouthful. Um, but it is so true because we are, again, we go back to when he first said how we always think that it won't be us. That's and right. like, it won't be me. And no, like, I, I'm, a, I'm above that. And so... Um, I that I, I really did um, like that quote. I've never heard of this person either. It's simplified because you know my parents used to always tell you, "Keep playing with fire, you won't get burned." Uh-huh. 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 That's simply what that that saying. Play with yes. the fire, and Test you're going you're to gonna get, get burned. Yes. Or, you know, the other thing is what you think you're doing in the dark is going to come to light because God is going to expose it. Mm. Whether you're falling yep. in the pit and you coming out with all the muck and mire, or you or if you're just going to pull it out one uh-huh. way or the other. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be noticeable. Yes, and that's like just back in the garden. Like everything you see, it looks good, mm-hmm. but when you touch it, it's consequences. Ooh, yes. So you just have to really, really be careful. Yes. I think that quote's kind of uh, directed to the passive uh, for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I, uh, too, I retired from the hospital, and um, nurses everywhere. You know, had the nurses station four on each side of me. Uh-huh. And, and uh, uh, the times I had to get up from the nurses station and leave, start my rounds early. Uh-huh. Um, not being caught uh, in the break room with somebody I don't trust myself with. Uh-huh. I don't trust uh-huh. around me because women will chase you down just like uh, Listen. a man would chase a woman down. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I don't have to run from women. Oh, 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 oh,
is like, crazy. Uh, this is the way to flee, bro. Right? Like, flee for <laughs> real. You were actively <laughs> fleeing <laughs> even back right. then. And she right. was married. What? Yeah, right. marriage. Right. There's, there's nothing sanctity of what yeah. right. about marriage. Mm. You know, I yeah. mean, my marriage to me is sacred. Yes. You know. Yes. My wife is sacred. Yes. Yeah. Her husband. She can't mm. about him. She can't about Wow. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. But, yep. but you know, yeah. also the um, in past a small group, that was one of the things that he, um, the married couples anyway, mm -hmm. um, he definitely would say, let us know that um, when things happen, we don't only affect the marriage, we impact those that surround us as well. Mm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I kind of stood close to that because... My question to myself, do I not only want to hurt my wife, but how about my daughter? Yeah, you know? yeah. And how about, you know, those that's close to us as well because mm -hmm. of the, the dumb decision I decided to make, you yeah. know, on the outside. So that right there helped me bring me in as well because I don't want to hurt none of them. So, again, you know, I'm going to stay, I'm going to honor God. Yeah. So if I honor God, I don't have to worry about all this other stuff that's out there. Exactly, you know? exactly. And then I'm going to share um, the application. Um, so the application for today, and we know this is always the action piece. Ask yourself what actions you must take to honor God even more with your sex life and develop a plan to implement those actions immediately um and so again um we are talking about sex as followers of jesus christ um this today was our fourth um episode in uh, his fourth installment and i believe um we may only have one more to go i think it's just going to depend on the holy spirit but I think the way that um, the congregation was looking today, he, he said, y'all want me to just move on, right? Just be done. And so um, if we have more, we'll be here. Um, if next week is our last um, installment, I can tell you whichever week is going to be the last week, I'm going to have um, a special guest in here. We'll be Pastor Great, and I'm going to put him in this hot seat. But for today in episode four, again, I have in the studio. Um, and my covenant partner, Brother Billy, um, Sister Adrian, Sister Ariana, Brother John Kelly, and Sister Patrice Kelly. And you guys again have been listening to Let's Talk About Sex as Followers of Jesus, the podcast from the studio here at Southern Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. Again, like, share, Subscribe to our YouTube page. Check out today's um, message. Um, you can find it on all of our um, platforms, streaming. I want to wish you guys a wonderful week and peace.